The leader of a nuclear state believes another nuclear power is about to launch at them. They decide that a preemptive nuclear strike is the only option, the killing of millions of foreign citizens to save their own people. But here's what they might not realize. Even if the conflict is confined to just one region of the globe, no one in the world will escape the long-term devastation that will soon follow. In 1945, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the world bore witness to the devastating effects of nuclear firestorms and radioactive fallout. But it wasn't until 35 years later that scientists calculated that something even more terrifying would happen if a large-scale nuclear war were to erupt. The smoke and soot lofted into the stratosphere by nuclear firestorms and spread around the world by jet streams would block enough sunlight to create an artificial winter and decimate agriculture. Earth would cool dramatically. Warmed by the sunlight it blocks, the smoke would float like a hot air balloon far above the rain clouds for months or years without being rained down. A global nuclear winter. Scientists predict that the resulting famine and civilizational collapse would kill most people on Earth. This is a terrifying expansion of what we've already known of the horrors of nuclear conflict. And yet, the nuclear winter story is also one of hope, of scientific discovery, collaboration, and outreach bringing about positive political change. A story over many, many years of people from all over the world from different backgrounds, ideologies, and disciplines that allowed the world to see beyond the mushroom cloud. In 1980, Jeannie Peterson, editor of Ambio magazine, commissioned various investigations into the long-term environmental effects of a hypothetical war using half of the US and the USSR's nuclear stockpiles. This included a seminal paper by atmospheric chemists Paul Crutzen and John Burks who focused on smoke clouds caused by nuclear firestorms. The magazine revealed for the first time the climatic effects of a nuclear war, prompting widespread press coverage and even hearings at the US House of Representatives. A science team including Richard Turco, Brian Toon and Carl Sagan took this research further. Sagan and Toon applied their findings about the impact of volcanic dust clouds on Earth's climate and Turco, who had military research connections, contributed details about nuclear explosions. Their paper coined the term nuclear winter. In 1983, Carl Sagan orchestrated two major conferences in Cambridge, Massachusetts and Washington, D.C., featuring an unprecedented televised discussion with Soviet scientists who were studying nuclear winter independently. Georgi Stenchikov was pivotal in publishing the first confirmatory Soviet reports, extending the American models to include 3D climate modeling and the effects of the oceans retaining heat. It was this significant bilateral acceptance that paved the way to help persuade both Gorbachev and Reagan, East and West, that a nuclear war can never be won and must never be fought. As computers improved, so did nuclear winter modeling. Turco, Toon, and Stenchikov were soon joined by Alan Robock, and all have kept working in the field to this day, often together. They and collaborators have created state-of-the-art simulations, revealing that a nuclear winter could last as long as a decade, and that even a regional nuclear war might damage agriculture enough to kill billions. For discovering and spreading the word about nuclear winter and continuing to research and educate about it, we give these heroes the Future of Life Award. Decades after a reduction of nuclear arsenals at the end of the Cold War, nuclear winter has unfortunately faded from public consciousness. But by remembering the work of these pioneering minds, we can better inform future decisions and hold our leaders accountable. When taken seriously, 
nuclear winter transforms the entire strategy around nuclear weapons. The notion of mutually assured destruction, MAD, is blown apart by the prospect of self-assured destruction, SAD. Heeding their warning could be the difference between catastrophe and flourishing.